Hello there everybody, this is Gaz here from EnglishWithGaz.com. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I hope you're doing well. Today I'd like to bring you 20 words, phrases, idioms, phrasal verbs, adjectives, whatever, 20 pieces of language connected to the mouth. We're going to begin with our nouns over here. So, the first noun is our gum. That's the pink bit above our teeth. Inside of our mouth we have a gum, top and bottom gum. Next is lip, singular, plural, lips. These pink things here on the outside of our mouth. Maybe these are basic, but as we get going, some of the vocabulary is a little more complex. Next up is saliva. Saliva. And I would always say that when you're learning new vocabulary, a great tip is to say it to yourself. Don't just say it in your mind though. Say it out loud. Say it when you hear it. Try and copy the way that I'm saying it, if you want to sound like a Yorkshire man, at least. Saliva. That's the liquid that's inside of your mouth when you have to swallow. Sometimes you swallow the saliva in your mouth. And here's another noun for you, a big mouth. You can call somebody a big mouth. A big mouth is somebody who's always talking, usually in a quite a confident or an arrogant way about themselves or something else. You know, like, oh, my mate's got a Ferrari, he's such a big mouth, he thinks he's the best person in the world because he's got a Ferrari. What everybody doesn't know is that he's got a massive loan to buy the Ferrari, he's such a big mouth. None of that's true, obviously, but big mouth is a noun Somebody can be a big mouth if they're always using their big mouth to talk in an arrogant way. Here's some slang for you. You know what? Slang is an important part of the language and I've had lots of discussions with uh, English teachers, with ESL teachers over the years, saying that slang isn't, isn't appropriate to be taught in classrooms and some people have a very strong opinion about slang and that's fine. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But my opinion is that Everybody uses slang, and if you want to be understood fully by British people, maybe you don't want to use slang, but if you want to fully understand British people, you need to understand slang. That doesn't mean you have to use it, but you need to know what it means. So, whatever, it's up to you whether you value slang in the language. Some people think if you use slang, you're not speaking in a pure way. I think that's absolute nonsense, to be honest. Slang is a big part of our life these days. Slang doesn't mean offensive, by the way, let me be clear. Slang is just an alternative word for something that perhaps isn't the original word in the dictionary, which has evolved. And to be fair, a lot of words in the dictionary now were maybe considered slang 20 years ago, but now they're just considered commonplace. So let's look at our slang that I've written down here, four words for you. These first three words are not offensive at all. So, as an alternative word for the mouth, I can call it a gob, I can call it a cake hole, or I can call it a pie hole. They're all quite humorous, to be honest, and as is with a lot of use of slang, we use it to be funny. So if you want to be funny and talk about your mouth, you can use the word gob. Oh, someone kicked the football right in my gob. It really hurt, you know? Um, I'm just... What are you doing? I'm just uh, shoving another packet of crisps down my cake hole. I'm eating food. I'm, I'm putting food in my mouth. In my cake hole. The same with pie hole. The last word here definitely is offensive. And, you know, it depends who you're talking to, of course, whether somebody will be offended. But, you know, if I'm using this word with my friends, of, of course it's not offensive. If I call somebody on the street a gobshite, then it's not going to end well for me. It's going to end badly. But gobshite basically just means somebody who is talking a lot of nonsense. For want of a better word, seeing as we're being adult here, someone who's talking shit. Um, it's actually an Irish word originally. You've probably seen this in, in movies over the years. I believe that Brad Pitt, when he was uh, playing the, the, um, the gypsy in, in Snatch, used this word quite a few times, gobshite. So again, use this word with caution. It's not the kind of word you would say to uh, somebody on the street, a stranger, but with friends, you might call someone a gobshite just because they're being a gobshite. Like, oh man, I'm gonna kick your ass at FIFA tonight when we play. All right, gobshite, quiet them down. 
It doesn't have to be offensive, it depends on the context of the situation. But by the same token, if you go out onto the street and just start calling random people gobshites in an aggressive way, you're going to end up getting lamped, hit. So be careful with this word, but there we go, this is an interesting slang word connected with the mouth. Let's move on now to some verbs. And here we've got to badmouth somebody. So to badmouth somebody means just to talk bad of them. You know, like, oh my God, have you heard about Katya? Well, no, what's wrong with Katya? <gasps> you wouldn't believe it. She's like got so many different boyfriends all at the same time. Really? I didn't know that. I thought, you know, Katya was really respectful, responsible young girl. No, she's sleeping with like five different guys at the same time. <gasps> I think we should probably stop badmouthing Katya, especially because Katya is made up and she doesn't actually exist. And it's not fair to stereotype Katya as somebody sleeping with lots of different men. It could easily be Alex sleeping with lots of different women. But either way, to badmouth somebody is to talk badly about them, usually behind their back, or to talk badly about somebody often behind their back. So to badmouth somebody. Here's another verb you would do with your mouth. It's spit, you know, spit. Simple, there's not really anything more I can say. We spit with our mouth. The next word is to salivate, 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 salivate. And this is when you smell something cooking and it smells really nice and your mouth starts filling up with saliva. Your Mouth is salivating, it's doing it, it's a verb, it's an action, it's unresponsive, you cannot control it. And for me it's onions, frying onions, every time makes me salivate. Let me know with a comment below what makes you salivate. And here are three more verbs which all mean pretty much the same thing. They're slightly different but there's no use learning the differences. They all mean to talk and talk and talk and talk. So we can ramble, we can yap or we can waffle. None of them are offensive, you know, oh God, my next door neighbor's always waffling on, just waffling on, talking and talking and talking. You know, some people like to talk. I like to talk. Maybe you say that I'm waffling now. I'm not sure. Uh, well, I'm just gonna move over here and we'll have a look now. I've got for you here a phrasal verb, which is to mouth off. So we can mouth off. That means to to begin basically, you know, just talking bad about somebody again in the same way that we can bad mouth somebody as a verb, very similar here to use it as a phrase, phrasal verb, we can say that somebody is mouthing off, you know, like there's somebody down my street who's always stood outside mouthing off at people that walk past, just talking nonsense, just, just generally just been a bit loud and obnoxious and been, been a bit mouthy and that's a good way to move on to our adjectives because here's an adjective, mouthy, somebody who's just always giving it the big mouth, someone who's always talking in an arrogant way often or just talking nonsense, you know? Um, similarly, we have another adjective here for you which is gobby, you know, he's a gobby person, he's a mouthy person, he's gobby, he's mouthy, they're always talking nonsense. If they're talking nonsense in an aggressive way, they're a mouthy gobshite. I mean, you know, you can use this language how you like. And, oh, I'll come back over here, actually. I'm just thinking about having a little dance. We'll finish off today with three idioms connected with the mouth. And there are many, many mouth idioms, but these are three of my favourites. So the first one is to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Or you might hear some people say never look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, like all idioms, this language is overcomplicated. All it really means is when something good happens and something lucky happens, don't question it. So if you find some money on the floor, whatever, £10 note, I might say to you, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You know, you may say, oh, I feel bad. Somebody's lost this £10. What should I do with it? Well, you know, you could take it to the police station and hand it in. That would be the right thing to do, of course, and good for you if you choose to do that. But most people wouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. They just put that money in their pocket and they would carry on with their life. So don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't question good luck that comes your way. Next one is to be born with a silver spoon 
in their mouth. So if somebody is born with a silver spoon in their mouth, it means they are born into a privileged family, or born into a family with money. Usually that's what it means. Um, you know, think of the royal family. If you're born into the royal family, you are definitely born with a silver spoon in your life, in, excuse me, in your life, <laughs> in your mouth. And finally, just to round off today's lesson, we have the final idiom of today, which is all mouth and no trousers. Now, this idiom simply means that you are somebody who likes to talk a lot, talk a good game, we might say, um, but actually not be able to follow through with the actions. So you talk a lot, but you don't have the balls, the cojones, to do what you say you're going to do. If that's somebody you know, you could say that they are all mouth and no trousers. So there we go. I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would ask you to kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on Facebook, VK or Twitter by searching English with Gaz. And I'm also an online English teacher, so if you'd like to increase your level of vocabulary and let me help you speak English with confidence, then check out my website for more information about one-on-one -on -one lessons. That is EnglishWithGaz.com. Com. Gaz with a Z, Englishwithgaz.com. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching today. This was actually a very uh, interesting and entertaining video for me to shoot. I hope that you have enjoyed it. That's what's the most important thing. If you did enjoy it, please let me know. Give me some feedback. Leave me a comment below wherever you're watching this video and I will reply to each and every one of you. I promise. Until next week or until the next video, thanks for watching. Take care. And all the best. Bye-bye for now.